so CAR T cells are uh, obviously we have the uh, Kite Gilead product that's available. I'm not going to try to say the name, um, but basically uh, it is approved now for uh, refractory diffuse large B cell lymphomas. The other uh, companies or several others, I'm sure the audience knows well, uh, are in development. Uh, and I think that um, the question is really going to be, how are these going to be used? What do the studies show? The current kind of all three parallel companies, tracks, groups of investigators have taken fairly resistant patients, shown a, a meaningful response rate, shown a lower CR rate, and shown a to be determined, I would say, durability. Meaning all of these studies, at every meeting you go to, you see two months more follow up, one month more follow up. Um, the question is there's no question that there are some patients with CAR T cells with resistant disease that this makes a huge difference in and essentially rescues the patient, and that's a great thing. How many, what percent of patients that happens, I think remains to be seen. Um, and, you know, it may pan out that it's 20 to 30 percent of patients, and that would be quite meaningful. On the other hand, there's a lot to go through to get a CAR T cell therapy, toxicity there, a lot of cost um, for a subset of patients that get the drug may actually benefit. And I think it's important to know that there are inherent selection biases in these studies because patients, and as you read the abstracts and see the presentations, these patients, uh, you start with this many, and then depending on the construct, patients don't make it to actually get the treatment for various either technical or clinical reasons. Uh, and, then, uh, and, and there are a number of patients who couldn't even be approached for the trials because of the nature of the trials and the accrual and the timing and so on. So, we can't ignore that. It's not, you know, I've had 80-year-old patients ask me, can I get CAR T-cells as frontline therapy? And I think that's not going to happen and shouldn't happen. On the other hand, I think this is very exciting that we're going to have new versions, a lot of work, a lot of combinations where we're going to have treatments that are much better, combinations that are much better, new generations of CAR T's. And so I think it's a good proof of principle um, and time will tell. So my, my prediction is relatively few patients are going to get CAR T-cells in the next year or two and it'll go from there um, once we get a little more time under our belt. That's my take.